A couple days ago, the passing of the legend that is Bruno San Martino was announced. Let's talk about Bruno San Martino. And I especially want to thank anyone who is subscribed to my channel. You're taking a moment to listen to this video. And I'm telling you, I, I especially want to thank you because this guy is a legend. You know, he really is. First of all, his story is unbelievable. And I invite anyone to just go to YouTube and search he himself telling his story about his mother and, and them hiding up in the mountains from the Nazis in, in Italy because uh, nobody tells his story better than him. Um, every time I hear the brutal San Martino story, I mean, I'm just in awe. And, you know, it's you can't help but admire his mother. Like You, you just can't. You know, she would go down, she would sneak down the mountains at night into their own home, right, to get food for them to eat. And if they would have seen her, they would have killed her right on the spot, probably worse than that. You know, and he became ill in the winter up in the mountains while, while they were hiding from the Nazis this whole time and almost died. His father at the time was working in America trying to make ends meet for, you know, for them. And when they finally found a way to make it to the States, he was a scrawny little kid. And, you know, he had no muscles. I mean, he was under, I mean, he was under 100 pounds. He was scrawny. He was different. He was Italian, right? He didn't speak English. He was always getting beat up on the way to school, on the way back home to school. Kept getting home with bloody noses. Eventually became tired of that. And when he discovered weightlifting, when he discovered dumbbells and at the Y and he started to lift weights, you know, he talks about how he couldn't lift the, the like the lightest dumbbell in the Y. That's how weak and scrawny he was. That's unbelievable to think about because he kept lifting those weights, kept getting stronger. Eventually he became a big, massive mammoth. I mean, this guy was massive, right? Yes, a lot of ignorant people will look at some of his pictures and be like, well, that guy didn't have a six-pack. You know, he didn't have, you know, pythons like Hulk Hogan. No, no, no. This dude was a massive, strong motherfucker, right? He also did amateur wrestling. I mean, this dude was for real, all right? I mean, this, was, this wasn't somebody to fuck around with. Bruno San Martino was had a massive neck. I mean, uh, he was just a massive dude. I mean, he wasn't chiseled and, and all that, but he was powerful, right? I mean, that's what he was. Dude could bench press almost 600 pounds. I mean, it's, it's insane. He lifted a wrestler that was like 600 and like, uh, he body signed a wrestler that was like 620 pounds. At the time, the wrestler he body slammed, they thought, you know, it was all bullshit, Right? Because nobody was able to body slam this dude. I forgot the name of the wrestler. So forgive me. All right. He was a big fat motherfucker. All right. Bruno said. Bruno was trying to break into the business. He was trying to make a name for himself. So he kept saying. I could body slam that guy. All right. His own promoter told him. What the hell are you doing? You know. Well, why are you saying these things? And he said. Let me do it. Bruno said. Let, let me body slam him. You think I'm just all talk? All right. Now, Bruno was more polite. He didn't talk like that, right? But but nonetheless, you know, in less polite terms, he said, put the motherfucker in the ring. I'll body slam him. I bet you anything I'll body slam him. Now, and that was a shoot, by the way. You can't body slam somebody and just script. Like, you could put in a script, right? but that's not the way wrestling worked back then, right? The crowd went crazy when he picked up this big, massive 602-pound dude and body slammed him. Here's the best part. The media thought, oh, this fucking wrestling, bunch of bullshit. They didn't buy it, right? The media didn't buy it. This is, this is horse shit. So they took one of those uh, big, you know, scales that they weigh meat, they weigh like meat on after they slaughtered the cow and shit. Dude weighed like 620 pounds. It was actually heavier than it was reported, right? Bruno body slammed that dude. Bruno was 5'10", man. He was a massive, this dude was a tank, all right? Now, politics and wrestling is nothing new, all right? He got politicked back in the day by Nature Boy, Buddy Rogers, the original Nature Boy. 
See, Buddy Rogers wanted to work with his friends, right? And he wanted some of his friends to use Bruno as a stepping stone so they can then sell, sell um, wrestling matches at the Garden, right? Or somewhere in the Northeast. Okay, that's the guy who Vince Sr. put the strap on. Okay, I'm Buddy Rogers. Bruno said, the hell with this, all right? And he fucking quit. You know, he went to several territories, tried to blackball him. His career almost went down the drain. But to give him a shot in Canada, right? Became a decent draw, was making decent money, right? And meanwhile, Vince Sr. was struggling over there in Capital Wrestling or WWWF, okay? Worldwide Wrestling Federation, right? They were struggling over there, all right? Buddy Rogers wasn't bringing in the money that they needed, all right? That was the original click, Buddy Rogers and his and his crew. Bruno San Martino was begged by Vince Senior to come back, right? You, you know what Bruno said? Bruno said, "Okay, first of all, he offered him all these guarantees. Now, this is not going to sound like a lot of money, right? But back in the day, this was a lot of money, right, for that business. Okay, he was offered six fifty a week, six hundred fifty dollars a week guarantee. Bruno said, "Nah." He, okay, what about seven fifty a week? He said, "Nah." So come on, Bruno. How, how much is it going to take to bring you here? He said, look, I'm not going to lie. Of course money has something to do with it. But if you want me to go to your territory, right, I'm not going to deal with Buddy Rogers, okay, and his fucking lackeys. Get me a match with Buddy Rogers. Vince said, oh, come on. Buddy Rogers is never going to agree to lose to a match to you. Buddy Rogers is not going to lose to you, Bruno, right? I could do the match, but you're going to have to put him over. Bruno said, no, nah, then, then I'm not coming then. Vince was like, come on, how can we possibly do this? And Vince, Bruno told him, and this is a shoot, this is a true story. Bruno said, Vince, just make the match. I'll take care of the rest. Just make the, if Buddy Rogers doesn't want to put me over, I'll make him put me over. Okay, I'm a massive motherfucker. I could bench press almost 600 pounds. Do you know what he could deadlift? Do you know what Bruno could fucking squat? This dude was a fucking mammoth, man. And he, he, was, he was also legit. He had legit uh, wrestling background in, in amateur wrestling. So he knew what he was doing. Back in the day, these wrestlers, man, they, they were man's man. Like, they, they actually could handle themselves, right? Bruno, right? And Vince, you know, they knew at that point, man. Well, look. We're going to have to do the match. We're going to have to make Rodgers believe he's going to win. Because if I tell him, you got to put him over, right, that he's going to say no, and he's not going to do it, right? He's going to leave to another territory or, you know, or, or whatnot. If I tell him it's going to be a shoot, like a real fight, then, then he's going he's gonna to make up some injury or something. So what they do, they, they make the match happen, all right? And if you look up that, that match, it didn't last very long. This is some fascinating shit, right? Buddy Rogers, nature boy Buddy Rogers went to that ring believing, okay, that he's going to win that match, that Bruno's going to put him over, right? The same guy he blackballed, okay, out of the Northeast, by the way. Okay, I'm getting all excited. I'm dropping, I'm dropping shit over here, right? Bruno San Martino, all right, when they did the face-off, because they, they would do face-offs back in the day, kind of similar like they do to boxing, all right? That the commission used to be there and everything. There was a ref giving instructions. Bruno looked at Buddy Rogers and he said, Hey, look, buddy. Um, this is not none of that bullshit, all right? I'm here to take your belt. He said the expression on Buddy Rogers' face he saw fear in his eyes. He said, you either, you know, you're either going to give it or you're going to get it took, in the words of fucking Mark Henry, right? So, shout out to Mark Henry, by the way, Hall of Fame, right? That's what he do. But look, like, either you're going to play along or I'm going to take this belt from you right here. At that point, it's a sold out venue. There's people all over the place. There's people there that think, you know, Buddy Rogers is the man, right? The last thing Buddy Rogers wants is for him to walk out like a little bitch, all right? He picked up Buddy Rogers over his shoulder, and he told him, 
Give it up, buddy. Give it up. Before you know it, the ref rang that bell. All right? Buddy Rogers wanted no part of a real fight with Bruno San Martino. All right? And when I tell you, you know, these wrestlers, they were like, like re the real deal. Like, I'm not bullshitting, all right? That was a little before the Bruno San Martino era, but like in the Luthez era. And, and nobody tells the story better than Dan Sepp, right? You can look that up. Promoters used to go all over, all over the country, the car carnivals, right? And they would say, well, this dude's the world champion, or this dude's the best in this region, right? And, and they would tell people, hey, whoever can last... 10 minutes or 5 minutes with a champ wins, you know, wins $1,000, right? If it, you don't even have to beat him. You just have to last with him, right? And every single time, okay, the, the champion or the wrestler will beat the fuck out of the local dude, right? Leave him all bloody and beat up, right? And, of course, people would leave like, holy shit. Maybe this wrestling thing is real. You know, like, man, he just beat up our, our, one of our toughest local dudes, and that's the way it was back then. Like you had to like fight for real to, to in any way, shape, or form declare yourself a champion in wrestling. Yes, it was scripted. Um, in terms of you know the outcomes were predetermined for the most part, right? But there was nothing, okay, all right, stopping a promoter from saying, you know what, I got to do what I got to do. This guy's not playing ball. Yo, we're, we're, this going to be a shoot. Right? That's just the way it was. Luthez was notorious. I mean, he was notorious for, you know, plain ball. You know, if it made business sense, you know, he'll do what he had to do. But if Luthez didn't like you, like if Luthez had a dude he didn't like, like, fuck that dude. I ain't going to put that dude over. I'm going to work with that guy. Uh, but come on, Lou, we got to put him over. I'll tell you what. You want him to be the champ? Then let's, let's have a legit wrestling match then. All right? That's, that's just the way it was. All right? You had to know how to hold your own back in those days. Or, or, or you, you know what would happen to you? What happened to Buddy Rogers? What happened to you? Right? Guys like Hulk Hogan, all right, and Ric Flair, I mean, if, if it still functioned that way, man, they would have gotten their ass beat so many times. It's not even funny. Right? A lot of these dudes in wrestling today, you know, yeah, yeah, they do a lot of flips in the air and they do a lot of crazy shit, right? And, and look, I enjoy it. Now, don't get me wrong. But, but I, you're not going to take AJ Styles city to city and challenging anybody to a fight. You know what I mean? Because uh, he might get beat up half the time. That's just the reality of the situation. These dudes used to be men's fucking men. And Bruno was the last of that breed, right? One of the reasons, Bruno, there's several reasons why Bruno was on top for so long. One is the obvious. He was beloved. He brought in a lot of money, right? So so obviously, that's why he was champion for so long. Another reason was, who the fuck in that wrestling business was going to take his title from him, right? Who the fuck was going to come say, even if it didn't make business sense, well, I got to go over Bruno, okay? Because Bruno could say, well, yeah, well, you're going to have to take it for real then. How about that? So it's, it's fascinating, the Bruno San Martino story. And... and I mean, he was the last of a dying breed. And for those that don't know, right, now you know, all right? And the other thing about Bruno San Martino, if it wasn't for him, there is no WWE today, all right? It doesn't exist. It does not exist, folks. It just doesn't. WWE does not exist today if, it's not, if it wasn't for Bruno San Martino, right? That's just the reality. By the way, another dude that would have gotten the snot kicked out of him, right? Like, you know how they did the Montel screw job on Bret Hart? You know, it, it was um, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. See, back in the day, the commission was, was refereeing these fights, okay? Or matches. Uh, I like using matches better for wrestling. That wouldn't have happened, man. Like, I'm telling you, like, if, if this was like the 1950s, 1960s, Right, and Bret Hart did not want to. He was not going to put Shawn Michaels over. Shawn Michaels is going to have to beat him for real. Like, like there was none of this like horse shit. Right now, I'll tell you what Vince would have done if it was in those days. He would have put him. He would have put Ken Shamrock right there. All right, oh, you don't want to play ball. All right, we're going to put Ken Shamrock in the ring. I'm going to make you play ball, motherfucker. Right, 
But it was just a different cutthroat, you know, business back in the day. Right? It was different. It was cutthroat. If, if wrestlers didn't like you, I mean, and think about it. You, you had to know to a certain degree what you were doing in the ring, right? Because at the end of the day, if a wrestler decided not to play ball, because the commissions, like, they were kind of in on it, but they weren't in on it all the way. For those that don't know, you, you used to have to get a, a wrestling, you know, license, just like you had to get a boxing license back in the day. You had to apply for these things, right? The commissions were involved in wrestling, if a wrestler decided, I'm not going to play ball. Now, you could say that's career suicide or um, a lot of wrestlers wouldn't do this because, you know, you don't want to get on the bad side of promoters. But if a wrestler went rogue, man, you have to know what the fuck you were doing. So whoever your champion was, man, he had to be the real fucking deal. Right? That's just the way it is. You know, especially in Bruno's day. Especially in the days of Luthez. Like, that's why you don't hear stories about Luthez getting beat up at the bar like, like you do about Shawn Michaels and shit, okay? Like, like you just didn't hear about that. In fact, it, it, if you got beat up at a bar or by some average blow, like, like, they would get rid of you, man. You were no longer marketable in wrestling. Okay, you just weren't. Okay? Like, these dudes, a lot of them were legit. And people that know their wrestling history, the Dan Severns, the uh, Josh Barnett's, you know, I mean, those guys, I mean, if it was the, you know, the Josh Barnett's and the Dan Severns would have been the champions if shit was legit, you know, in terms of the way wrestling was, okay? Because, you know, picture Dan Severn in his prime, who the fuck was in a, who, who in wrestling was in a fuck with Dan Severn, right? Uh, Josh Barnett, who's going to fuck with that guy? Right? That's why those dudes, you know, they, they kind of... There is a a certain level of legitness, okay? <laughs> if you want to call it that. But it was, to a certain level, it was legit. Old school wrestling. I'm, I'm not talking 80s. I'm not talking Hulk Hogan. I'm not talking any of that. At some point, the most, more entertaining and the guys that were best on the mic and the guys that were better able to put on a better performance. At some point, those guys took over the business, right? But there was a time where you, if you were the champion, you had to be legit, okay? If you were the champion, nobody, no random Joe Blows going to beat you up in the streets, right? And, and, and if some dude decided that he's not going to play ball, then you would fuck him up for real in that ring, right? And it was legal because technically speaking... Um, if, you know, if, if they beat the shit out of you, that's just, technically speaking, it was legal, right? I mean, they did have some illegal stuff here and there, like they had rules, okay? But within those rules, it would beat the shit out of you, right? It, it became what, you know, an MMA match, you know, back in the days, okay? Uh, without the punching and kicking, you know, but o overall, though, it, it was cutthroat that way. And, and that's why I, I have a big... I, I'm, I'm fascinated with wrestling from the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s. I really am. Because those dudes were some real badasses, man. Like, they, they really, really were. Okay? Now, the reason wrestling didn't stay like that again... Because it became more of an entertainment spectacle. Okay? People started to look at it less as a sport and more as a spectacle. A spectacle. Alright? Right? And the reason for that is you know because it was fixed you know and and it was not a clean sport and it wasn't legitimate in, in sense of everyone's really fighting for real you know overall so so that's why it kind of evolved into what it is today you know vince said hey they just tell everybody this shit's not real and just go with it you know but you know you see a lot of these wrestlers today man like the kevin owens and you know, Sami Zayn's like these dudes will get, get beat up by an average dude in the bar. It's just the reality, man. You know, it's the truth. I'm just saying, like it's just the reality of the situation. You know, but anyway, I, I just wanted to do this video to salute Bruno San Martino, a true badass man. I mean, this dude was just—he was great, man. Like he, he really was, and and. I'm glad he's getting the respect he deserves even today in 2018, right? I really am. With that said, this is D-Style.
and I'm out. Peace.